Uh, there's an article coming to us from Forbes, and they are basically um, angry. All right, they're basically super angry. Right over here, anti anti woke Star Wars fans are being weird about the acolyte. This is from Danny D. Placido. I don't know who that is. Let's see, the, a powerful Sith, a compelling mystery, and a thrilling lightsaber battle. The Acolyte <laughs> is proving to be one of the strongest stories of the Disney <laughs> Star Wars era. But, yeah. quote, anti-woke fans are being extremely weird about the show. What happens in episode five, right? So we have over here, Star Wars Holocron head, uh, head budding a lightsaber blade. Maybe the coolest thing we've ever seen. It was the cringiest thing. But uh, let's continue. <laughs> I'll, I'll say something about the whole headbutting lightsaber in a second. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah. Despite being outnumbered, the Sith ruthlessly mow down his opponents. The uh, battle results in surprisingly high numbers of fatalities. In a predictable twist, the Sith was revealed to be. Uh, is it Quimir? Is that how you say it? I think it's Kimir. I think Kimir? it's Kimir. I think Man, this, the, you, all, you admitted it. Predictable twist. A twist is not supposed to be predictable, man. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Meanwhile, long lost twins, Osha and May, Amanda Stenberg, clash over their value system. May attempts to reconcile with her dogmatic sister, but Osha stubbornly clings to the narrative that the Jedi told her and rejects May. Now, if you go further down, this person basically brings up a lot of uh, people on X, right? This is seriously how it felt being the positive side of Star Wars. And I want to make sure this is the gif right over here. Right, positive sides of the Star Wars. No, uh, no, there are actually a lot of positive people on Star Wars. It's just the fact that we are pointing it out. Um, no. uh, let's see, let's see, right, right over here. Um, Star Wars fans have uh, have been angry about Star Wars since the prequel trilogy, but the current split in the fandom is even more pe petty than usual. And the okay. thing is, this shout out to Chris Gore. He says to prepare for an all day global event, and I'm actually invited to this uh, to this funeral for our <laughs> franchise, Star Wars. Right now, this person said. Uh, people have been mad about Star Wars in some capacity since like 1997. You aren't special. Okay, now if we go further down, uh, this person right over here says, uh, one of the objectively funniest things that happened to Star Wars was the last decade is a heated, hateful, bitter discourse to erupt over this guy, simply the most unserious fandom on the internet. Now, of course, he says that, well, we haven't seen Sith in over a millennia, right? Mm -hmm. Basically okay. said that, and now uh, he... Uh, <laughs> Uh, now it's canon that like oh now 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 it shows up now now this and the thing is that soul is alive he can go back and report this right so basically yeah, of course, exactly, Wikipedia right? Wikipedia you, you, live you, changed it you would right. imagine it if that gets time. reported it's like that's gonna be a huge red alarm to in the entire Jedi so it really destroys what's what transpired in the prequels yeah. Now, if you go further down, right over here, Wikipedia, we aren't going to mince words on this one. If your response to an editor okay. adding a date to an article on Wikipedia is to tell them you hope they and their pets die. You are not a Star Wars fan. I hate like that has no place here and you are not welcome in the community. No and receipts, then, of course. Yeah, of course, no receipts. And that this, 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 this person that they, they're referring to is basically part of um, Star Wars theories people, right? They're basically saying it without saying it. Right, because Star Wars theory is the one who pointed it out, or when someone mentioned in the chat. Right, so this person said, "You will not take a key, a Kiadi Mundi's birthday from me." Right, and then we have this person says, "It came, uh, it came to me in a dream, acolyte. How am I supposed to endure Star Wars with a, uh, a Kiadi Mundi having a different birthday?" Right, basically, um, it's another person says, "I have been a Star Wars fandom so long. I remember back in 2008, pre Disney, when Ahsoka's existence broke Legends canon." I remember when everyone in uh, was an uproar of Mandalorian portrayal of TCW contradicted Clone Wars, Mandos, Republic Commandos. But but the thing is, I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen the original. Uh, ah was people actually mad about Ahsoka? Not really. I thought, I thought a lot of people really enjoyed her. They did. This person talking shit. Man. All right, let's continue. No, right, I, now, let, me, yeah, let me just say that when they introduced Ahsoka, I mm -hmm. know there was a, I know that I had the question that Wait, Anakin had a apprentice? Well, where the fuck was she? And mm -hmm. you know, she should still yeah, be around. I know there was that. That, that yeah. was a, it. Was a questioning. It wasn't breaking canon. It was introducing new things. You know, she had to be gone by the time the movies came out. She had to be yeah. because she wasn't in the movies, and there was no mention. Like Obi Wan never mentioned her, but the fact that Anakin had 
an apprentice that Obi-Wan knew and Obi-Wan mm-hmm. never mentioned, that means she has to go away at some point. But that doesn't mean she could never exist. So yeah. the question then becomes what's going to happen with her and who she is. And, of course, they completely fucked that up, too. But it wasn't that people were mad about the character. They liked the character. They just didn't know how it was going to. Every time they introduced something new, like starting with the prequels, it fucked up the existing canon. And mm-hmm. so it became this whole furious, well, how do we, how do we, you know, the Clone Wars uh, in the prequels does not match the lore of the Clone Wars up to the prequels. Yeah. So the, the, there became this whole back and forth of, well, how do we square this? Because we understood the clones were this. And now in the movies, which is also canon, the clones are now that. So, and I think they settled on where well, there's two different generations of clones. This was the first generation of clones and then the clones after that. But it was all done after the fact to try to square this peg but they kept doing it they kept compounding it and introducing new things and it's not that people didn't like the things that they were introducing it's just that we have these original movies that none of this shit is in so Mm -hmm. what happens to all this stuff and how does this fit in existing canon and then disney came along and said none of it's canon it's all fucking bullshit we're throwing (laughs) it all away and, and unless we like it and we're gonna bob Iger even used the words mine the ip we're gonna mine the ip for for useful stuff uh i mean literally doing that but yeah it was it was really i i don't remember anyone being upset about ahsoka i think there was a lot of questions like well geez darth vader had an apprentice and it was not star killer from the game well how come star killer and ahsoka you know there was all these things that just didn't match up Mm -hmm. yeah i I think i think at the time the precise i was just gonna add i think Mm -hmm. at the time back when the, the community was not as divided as it is now, that was our definition of upset with Ahsoka compared to being upset now. Like, mm-hmm. being upset now compared to, like, 10 years ago is different now because of how absurd Star Wars has gotten. So it's like, yeah. what was ups- absurd 10 years, upset 10 years ago is just, like, nor- normal nothing burger today. Yeah. Just want to add that up. Yeah, let's see. However, the point of Kiati Mundi's declaring the sixth ex- uh, the Sith extinct is that he is wrong. Indeed, one of the biggest plot points of the prequel trilogy is that Jedi had become too complacent to recognize a Sith in their midst. Now, here's the thing. Nerdrotic says right over here, I guess the Sith haven't been extinct for a millennium. Hashtag act like. The person responds with, I don't understand how you can be pretty high information Star Wars junkie and then turn around and treat Kiati Mundi's line about the Sith being extinct as factual when the audience knows he is wrong as he's saying it. Sidious didn't spring out of the hole in the ground. Now, so basically, there's a lot of people basically bat- nope. going to bat. A lot of people are basically coping and going to bat and going to the fence for uh, Disney Star Wars. Now, See, moving that, forward, that person, that person yeah. would have been correct if mm-hmm. Kiati Mundi wasn't in the fucking show. Yes. If he wasn't in the show, then yes, he could be wrong and make it an honest mistake. But he is in the show, which means he was alive when this happened, which means he does know about the Sith being around before a thousand years ago. That means he so lied to, yeah, to Yoda. He straight up fucking <laughs> yep. lied. Yep. To the Jedi Council. <laughs> oh, man. What a liar. Let's see. Uh, some of the criticisms from anti-woke influencers were openly hostile and clearly made in bad faith. For example, May cutting her hair with a lightsaber was criticized as woke plot twist for some reason. A trope of a samurai or knife cu- a knight cutting their hair uh, with a sword is common, represents a new beginning. One of the most in- uh, famous was Mulan. <sighs> All right, let's continue right over here. Now, Echo Base, I'm not sure if you're if you're still here. Echo Base, right over here. Uh, you wrote, "Can someone explain? Uh, please explain how this makes sense." Monday, practicing with sticks. Tuesday, dueling, uh, dual wielding against a Sith. Right, and this person responds with, "Yes, never have we seen a relative newcomer embrace a force and then face a dangerous foe after only a brief period of training. That is definitely not something that happens in every Star Wars movie. Well, now, but- when Luke did it, he got beat and he got and yes. lost his hand. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, I, it's, I'll get back to all this because like, I was supposed to say something about the fucking lightsaber dueling and all that shit. Uh, mm. And the helmet and the stupid ass helmet. But yeah, uh, continue yeah. with the article and then we'll go back to it. Yeah, let's see. The barrage of bad faith critiques implies that some Star Wars fans would probably hate the original trilogy if it was released today. Incorrect. All of these themes have retcons, mistakes, and awkward lines of dialogue. And of course, they bring the stupid kick thing. Of course, this is yep. choreography. This is not 
story destroying. Yeah. You're not destroying the story, right? Right, right. So he was, right over here response like, like we don't know people practice and train. <laughs> That's so stupid, man. <laughs> These people. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, this this is a choreography thing, right? This is it's, that's a Star Wars stuff. Uh, if Return of the Jedi was released today, people would use this two second goof a- as a way to whine about how franchise is ruined beyond repair. No, this is just. Yep. This is so stupid, man. Like this is I can I can forgive this. Oh, this is just choreography. This is like it, it should have been maybe it should have been like a different cut or a different angle where it looks like he's kicking it. But the thing is that this does not destroy your narrative or your story, which is crazy. But yeah, uh, and of course, all of these people we have, you know, I did my time with Star Wars hater. I was on the front lines thing, brave things like Ahsoka looks good and feels like uh Xanax commercial and Kenobi takes uh place entirely in the dimly lit pit. You can trust me when I say everyone is being insanely weird about Acolyte, and basically all these people are basically going hello, to bash for Acolyte. Critics, I think you're going too far. Yeah, and of course this person right over here says, why does he keep watching? Because watching. he's a fucking he's, he's a movie critic. Crit- he's a critic. Jeremy Johns and everyone who's complaining about why it's bad, the reason that we're watching, you know, we're, we're nowhere near the caliber of any of these people that we mentioned, right? But the thing is, we watch, we watch it because we want we hope that it's good. And we tell the viewers that it's that's whether it's bad or good. And that's the reason why like he does it. Right. And yep. manufactured controversy aside, the acolyte is pretty good. <laughs> Said the non-fan. This ar- this entire article is written from a non-fan's point of view, a normie's point of view, who's just yeah. like it's the kind of person that says, Why are you so upset about it? It's just a movie. Yeah. 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 I, that, that, that's the kind of feedback I got when I talked about. Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. Like they couldn't even name me particular characters, particular races, particular scenes. They just kept saying the comments, oh, it's gonna be a good game. And then they didn't really explain why. It's like I kept giving them reference materials about what happened in the past, why I liked about the previous thing, and they couldn't say shit, man. All they say, oh, it's just gonna be a good game. And that that's yeah. It. Yeah, so uh Ogami, what would your uh what are you gonna say about the, um the, the the lightsaber stuff? Well, again. I'm someone who practices martial arts as a hobby, and one of the martial arts I practice is Kali, which is Filipino stick fighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pekiti is what I practice. And yes, we wear protective gear. We wear helmets that protect you from getting hit in the head with a fucking stick, right? Headbutting the stick, or even, never mind Filipino, if you were doing sword fighting and you wore a steel helmet, which existed... And you had steel gauntlets, which existed, and they could resist a sword, and they could resist a blade. Headbutting a fucking blade or blocking it with your arm is the dumbest thing you could do in a fight. And Mm -hmm. if you're up against someone who's that heavily armored, where, okay, I'm going to hit him with this stick and their helmet will protect them, I'm just not going to fucking hit him in the head. I'm going to cut their leg off, or I'm going to stab them in the arm, or I'm going to slice their fingers off, or uh, there's a million other targets that you can aim for that isn't the head. And if you're, cl- if you're, if you're holding your weapon still enough for someone to run their face into it, then you just <laughs> suck. I don't know what to tell you. There's nothing. I, there's no instruction I can give you. There's no coaching I can give you to win that fight because you're sitting there holding your stick out for them to run their face into it. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.